very much, Mike. Uh, we will entertain questions. It would be best if people would stand so we can hear you. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, move on up. And uh, if if we think that there will be trouble hearing the questions, we'll repeat them, and then they can be answered. Are you going to Um, it was on the first slide, July 17th to 20th. Exactly. You want to do that again? Yes. I was just checking because uh, the dates for Detroit since I stuck. So the dates we're proposing for Detroit are July 17th through 20th, a month before the World Cup. How hot is the temperature time your, of your convention? What's the weather generally like? You may need to repeat the question. We have a question on the weather. So the question was, what is the weather like? Uh, weather in Detroit in July, the average temperature is between 63 and 83 degrees. Uh, we get about nine days of rain in July. Uh, thunderstorms certainly do happen. Our hotel is located right on the river, so there's a very nice river breeze. Generally speaking, days are warm, nights get cooler. Um, pretty comfortable this time of year. Uh, there is the occasional heat wave, I won't lie. You could get a weekend of uh, you know 90 degree temperatures um, would be a heat wave for us. And what humidity? Um, varies tremendously. You certainly could have high humidity um, and, and you could have low. Um, high is probably more likely in the summer. Um, again, during the day, um, tends to dry it a little at night. Well, Phoenix, um, the outdoor temperature will be slightly higher than Detroit and uh, the humidity <laughs> will be slightly lower. Uh, the indoor temperature will be the same as Detroit. <laughs> Restaurants. Uh, if you want to walk to the restaurants that are nearby in Phoenix, you can do so. Uh, we recommend that you wait until later in the evening when the sun goes down if you're that temperature sensitive. But most people can do it just fine. Glenn. So, uh, for both, um, I'd like to know about last, last leg logistics. So, how do you get from the airport to your site? Is there a shuttle? How far is it? Cabs, buses? That's so for Detroit, uh, it is the Motor City, um, and so car rentals are, I will be honest, are the easiest way to get around in Detroit, and car rentals start at about $25 a day. A taxi from the airport is about $45. Uh, we'll also be arranging for shuttle service. The shuttle service will be between $22 and $26. It'll be a sign up in advance and we'll make arrangements for that on the peak days. We also plan to organize a ride sharing board on our website to coordinate people who are driving, uh, you know, who, who could pick people up or to coordinate cab sharing and that sort of activity. You can get there on public transportation. It costs $2.25, but it takes two hours and multiple bus transfers. <laughs> Tempe Mission Palms has a free airport shuttle. Uh, should you desire to use the light rail, there's a light rail station uh, just outside the airport with a shuttle system to get you there. And you can take a light rail directly to the hotel. There's a light rail stop right outside. But with a free airport shuttle, you shouldn't have to do that. If you want to rent a car, of course you can. And the parking's free. Further questions? Kevin. How do you get there by train? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Amtrak station is four and a half miles from uh, from our hotel. The, you didn't ask about buses, but the Greyhound station is a mile from the hotel. Uh, Amtrak services Phoenix through uh, a bus system out of Flagstaff, or you can catch uh, Amtrak at Maricopa. And if you choose to go into Maricopa, I will send somebody to fetch you. It's about 30 miles. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have a quick comment and a question for Detroit. The quick comment is Detroit's uh, transit is not the most useless in the country. It's San Jose Light Rail. <laughs> hey now. And that was useful during Con Jose. Yeah. And the question is 
Um, I know that there's a big Arab population. You mentioned Greek Town. Is there an Arabic restaurant area as well? Yes. So um, there's certainly a lot of Arabic restaurants in Detroit proper, but um, if if you're looking for the center of that, it's Dearborn, Dearborn. which yeah. is right next door um, and is a real um, Arab cultural center. So uh, there's the Arab American Museum is there. Uh, dozens of restaurants, great bakeries, amazing. Uh, baklava and uh, and, and Arab American pastries. Okay. Yes. I have a question for Phoenix. Uh, in May I say you stand up? Okay. In uh, Detroit's presentation, they had mentioned some of the ideas that they had for programming their NASA thing. I was wondering if you had any ideas on how you'd like to program your NASA. Uh, programming ideas for NASA. Um, yeah. We're sponsored by Leprechaun Inc., which is. Um, yes. Uh, organization which puts on Leprechaun annual convention every year and we're strong in the art, literature, and science so we plan to have a strong presentation of those genres. Um, we also have a proximity to Mexico and Central America and uh, we're already investigating possible um, um, bilingual um, programming to accommodate those and we hope to have a bilingual version of our website up shortly um, as soon as I can finish updating the English version. <laughs> so uh, we plan to do um, a lot of that, uh, as well as, um, you know, things like the gaming and anime and um, costuming. And Costume Con was at this site uh, last year, I believe it was. So we've got a strong costuming uh, community there. So we'll have, um, you know, plenty of things to offer in programming that you normally see at NASFIX and World Cons. Are there further questions? Well, I can ask yeah. one other. Go ahead. Um, I would ask both bid committees, to what extent are you actively working with the local fan groups? And in Detroit, my knowledge is of Stiliagi Air and Waldo and Magic. I don't know what the groups are in Phoenix, but to what extent for each of you are you bringing in their, you know, their support? Um, so uh, Confusion is my home convention. It's the one okay. I'm most associated with. So I've been a member of the uh, ASPA board, the Ann Arbor Science Fiction Association, which runs uh, <laughs> th which runs Confusion. Uh, yeah, the other ASPA. Uh, so I've been, a, I've been a member of the board. I was a three-time chair of Confusion. I've worked on the con for about 15 years. Um, Confusion uh, has uh, given a grant to the bid. Uh, we have several Confusion former and current committee members working on our bid committee. Um, the other sort of big player is, as I said, is PenguinCon these days. Um, and we've also received a grant from the PenguinCon board and have representatives from the board sitting on, on the committee. Um, Conclave uh, is the other, is, was our other old, older convention and they have taken a, a gap year. We'll, we'll just call it. Um, so they are actually, this will be their first year. Uh, they're, they took a year or two off and now they're going to be running again this October. So we'll certainly be reaching out to them as well. Besides the annual Leprechaun Convention, um, I am chairman of the board of Leprechaun Inc., so the entire organization is behind the bid. Uh, there's another group called CASFIS, which puts on CopperCon every year, and we've got a lot of overlap in members there. Uh, there's another group called the Dark Ones, which put on a periodic convention called DarkCon, and uh, they're very costume, gaming, steampunk kind of orientation, and we always have a representative of DarkCon involved with the convention to incorporate them into the event because they throw the best parties in the Phoenix conventions. So we always get them involved. And there are several other smaller groups like UFP, United Federation of Phoenix, which is, I believe, the oldest Star Trek club in the country, and a Doctor Who group called TARDIS, the Arizona Regional Doctor Who Information Society. So there's quite a few groups that are involved. Thank you. So, uh, Kevin. Uh, yes, you talked about Detroit being the Motor City. And, uh, Phoenix has already answered this question, but what would be the situation for somebody driving an overheight vehicle? I'm not necessarily meaning an RV or a bus, but just a vehicle that has a clearance at the top of more than, six say, feet. six feet, six inches. Uh, I... <clears throat> microphone, microphone, microphone. Okay, we have a discounted rate in one of the hotel parking garages. I do not have the height on that. Uh, I, oh, sorry. 
Okay, we do have a discounted rate on, for one of the hotel parking garages. Um, I don't have a height on that at this point. Uh, there are actually other parking lots in the area that are open air that, and that would accommodate the oversized vehicle. And I can also check with them to find out the height, uh, what their height uh, restrictions are on the uh, it's, uh, parking garage. And that permit overnight and long-term parking? Exactly, yes. Okay. Obviously not a problem with the hotel garage, but I would need to check on that with the open air lots. Uh, by the same token, how far away are those open air lots from the hotel? Actually fairly close, but I don't have exact distances on that. Uh, I would need to check on that. They're not located in an arbor or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. The, uh, the facility uh, is the home to many large trade shows, um, such as the you know, Detroit Auto Show, for instance. So there are, um, there are parking facilities nearby that are suitable for dealer vehicles, for instance. Mark. Handicapped access and um, have other conventions been able to do things like red scooters, unmasked. Could you repeat the question? The question, question is, is about access and whether there will be scooters available. Uh, so, I, we have uh, not traditionally needed to rent scooters for the conventions that we have in Michigan, um, but uh, that's certainly something we'll be investigating. And I'm sure, given the amount of convention traffic that happens in Detroit, that it's that such services are available. Um, in terms of general questions of accessibility, uh, the hotel is fully ADA compliant, with the exception of the business office, the business. Uh, Business center, thank you. The business center door is the only non-ADA compliant space. Um, but we also recognize that ADA compliance doesn't necessarily mean full <coughs> accessibility. So our plans are to uh, to enlist a couple of members of our local Fanish community who are in wheelchairs or use mobies and to have them do a walkthrough of the hotel with us so, uh, and the function spaces so that we can identify potential problems um, and make plans to address them before they occur. For uh, Tempe Mission Palms, we did a walkthrough and a scoot through uh, before Westercon 2009 and uh, everything is uh, accessible except the tennis courts on the second floor uh, but as far as scooters go uh, we arranged for scooters um, for Westercon and we needed only a few of them but the scooter rental place was great so it's already been tested and works fine uh, so this is a question uh, it's, it's the same question, but it's going to get flipped for both because it's different, different facilities. So this is about fit, right? So as you, as I think Tammy pointed out, uh, NASFIPs can be widely different in size, right? So for Detroit, if it's a very, very small NASFIP, how do you want to treat rattle? Like, I mean, big, small conventions and big sizes tend to have an issue there. For Mike, where for Phoenix, it's the other question. Uh, a Western Concise Hotel, if you get a really big NASFIP, how do you grow? So it's the same question, but kind of flip. Um, I think because all of our function spaces are on that one floor, uh, that that will help uh, help avoid rattle. It's not like we're spread out throughout the hotel. So you know, so there are two sort of nodes of activity: um, the the um, open, you know, the exhibit hall and the main floor. Um, the exhibit hall also we will use as much or as little of it as we need, and we can use pipe and drape to make that space appear smaller, for instance. Um, and we don't have to use all of the function spaces um, if we if we don't need the space. Um, I also think the fact that we're sort of compressing the con suite and the uh, hospitality areas, the parties, into a couple of floors will also help create another node of activity. Um, and the, the central uh, hotel bar area that I talked about um, will also help with that. Uh, for Tempe, uh, as you know, we uh, ran the Westercon in 2009 there. We had 600 warm bodies. Uh, when we ran the first North American Discworld there in 2009, we had 1,100 warm bodies. So we know we can handle up to about 1,100. Um, for the last NASFIC in Raleigh, uh, we had about 700 warm bodies. And I was the programming and events division head for that NASFIC. So I got to see firsthand how it worked in a large facility. And that's one reason why I decided to take it under one roof, was to uh, bring it down more compact. So we know that we can handle Raleigh's number of 700, and we can grow about 50% or so before it becomes a little uncomfortable. But uh, room-wise, we've got 280 of the 303 rooms, so we've got plenty, and there are overflow hotels starting about a quarter mile away. So should we need them, we can tap into them right away. Linda? 
So there's lots of restaurants in both places. What about uh, places like supermarkets for, for picking up party supplies? And what about hospitals? Should there be any elevator or escalator? Escalator accidents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps escalating this hospital issue. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, I, it's enough to make you scream. <laughs> so the question was about accessibility of grocery stores and um, and uh, hospitals. I don't know off the top of my head how far the nearest hospital is. Um, there are certainly hospitals in Detroit, and there are good hospitals in Detroit. Um, supermarkets, there are a, a number of full-service supermarkets in Detroit. There tend to be more independent supermarkets. Um, so again, I don't have exact distances, but there are certainly some um, in the Midtown area. We just had a Whole Foods open uh, in the city, and uh, other sort of large grocery store chains are in the process of opening. Uh, Tempe, St. Luke's Hospital is a couple miles down the road on Mill Avenue to the south of the hotel, and the hotel is just half a block off of um, Mill Avenue. Uh, nearby grocery stores, a couple miles. There's a Costco that's about four miles away, and a Sam's Club that's about um, six miles away. Just to follow up on the hospital question, so uh, Detroit houses the w Wayne State University and the Associated Medical Center, so that would be our nearest uh, our nearest hospital, and it's probably four miles, five miles away. Are there more questions? Yeah. Do either of you, and I've been to my, the tipping facility, so it's really a Detroit question, but for everybody else, Mike may want to answer as well. Do you anticipate any issues with local nearby restaurants and whatnot being closed during the weekend or closing early any other day or whatever? Um, because we are in the Central Business District and it is a uh, office heavy environment, certainly some of the restaurants in the Renaissance Center traditionally close on weekends. We'll be reaching out to them to let them know that this event is coming. The food court, there are certainly restaurants that stay open in the food court all the time. And the freestanding restaurants that are outside of the Renaissance Center would be open on the weekend. And then certainly everything in Greektown, Midtown, those areas are, are hopping and thriving on weekends. Uh, in Tempe, being a college town, not being a uh, holiday weekend, pretty much everything's going to be open normal hours. So I don't expect there to be any problems. But we're going to have somebody contact them and warn them in advance that uh, there's a bunch of science fiction people who are going to be around and eat strange hours. So at least they're aware. Okay, are there further questions? I. If not, we could uh, wind this up a little bit early. Uh, I guess not. Okay, thank you very much for the, uh, the bidders here, and uh, everybody should vote. Okay.